And so, like, just for for people who are watching, too, so, like, the easiest way for me to explain escrow is the neutral third party also, and you can mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong here. Okay. So, like, earnest money, mm-hmm. right? So escrow typically holds earnest money unless somebody requests for it to be, like, one of the buyer or the seller people. Can we, buyer can the, we talk about earnest money before just, the, like, what earnest money is? Before sure, go to yeah, the next absolutely. Yeah. Go for it, Doyle. No, no I was, like, <laughs> talking to that can, mic, buddy. Somebody, somebody else can, but when we talk about earnest money, so earnest money is the good faith funds that are put into a contract mm-hmm. when the contract is accepted to tell the seller that they, in good faith, plan on purchasing their home. It's a fraction, a percentage of whatever that purchase price is. Yeah, which typically we use 1% of the purchase price. Sometimes in the lower end, it's $1,000. I've seen people do $500 before. I actually had this client like offer up $10,000 in earnest money and the seller's like, I don't care about $10,000 in earnest money. And so the buyer came back and said, fine, I'll just give you a dollar for earnest money then. (laughs) (laughs) And he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So earnest money is there. It's available for, um, in case the buyer terminates for with, that's not a contractual reason. Mm -hmm. So, how I explain this is we get two days from close of escrow. They've released all their contingencies. They decide, Oh, I don't want to buy the house anymore for whatever reason. That's not contractual. And they pull out of the transaction. Technically that money is supposed to go to the seller according to the contract. Mm -hmm. However, because what I'm getting at is because escrow is the neutral third party and they Mm -hmm. hold on to those funds. Mm -hmm. Escrow cannot release those funds to either party without written instructions from the buyer and the seller. Yeah, I just learned that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. You've known that, but well, you've, been, you've dealt with it. Yeah. Yeah. I just experienced that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But it, 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 did, it worked out. It, it was fine. It worked out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it worked out. It can get so, tricky yeah. sometimes. Mm-hmm. So so, your con- so the contract is between a seller and a buyer, but the contract is not between, doesn't include first American title. So as Dan pointed out earlier, everything that title in escrow does has to be with a direct written instruction. Mm -hmm. So the contract is a contract between seller and buyer. First American is not involved. So when you deposit funds in our office, we have to have a written mutual instruction from all parties instructing us on what we are to do with the funds. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, you know, it's like, oh, well, we wrote in there that it's not refundable. And I said, and you're absolutely correct. I said, however, I have to have a written instruction from all parties instructing me on how to disperse it. Right. So if that seller doesn't sign that form Mm -hmm. in the buyers, even if it's Mm non-refundable, they got, they got to, they got to go figure it out elsewhere with a mediator, an arbitrator, something like that. Right. So we just hold on. (laughs) We hold on it. We do our best efforts to try to, you know, to try to get, of course, the mutual instructions. But yeah, Yeah. there are some cases where. What, what's the longest you guys have ever held earnest money for? (laughs) Well, it you, and I know that it's changed. I think that it's changed, but we used to hold funds for up to three years. Mm-hmm. And then eventually if there are, so we do our best efforts to try to get yeah. sellers and buyers to agree. But if they don't, then it's a sheeted to the state of Oregon and then the state of Oregon, like the unclaimed property. Oh, that's the ultimate buyer. Screw you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I tell people, some, that, I tell people mm-hmm. the state fills potholes with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some people will hold out. Some people will be like, they're not getting it. They, you know, so yeah. it's just, they just, it's a matter of principle. And so, well, if the state gets it, the state gets it. It's like, well, okay. Yeah. That's your choice. For all the people so. that we're scaring the shit up right now <laughs> 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 about earnest money, it's, it's very rare that it actually very happened. Rare. Yeah, it's it's very like rare. maybe 1% yeah. of the transactions that I see that. Yeah. T- typically, yeah. so Robin, you could probably go into because it sounds like you have experience recently from it, but on a termination, on a termination, it says who's supposed to get it on that termination. And it's up to all parties to sign, but technically it's directed. Well, I mean, that, they have right? to sign the termination. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they don't sign the termination, then. Then the state gets yeah. the money. <laughs> the After the a certain period well, of time, yeah. yeah right. This goes, particular goes one state. was a, yeah. a, a buyer that was representing themselves. So they didn't have an agent. Mm-hmm. And they just decided to quit communication. And it was closing day, and they just disappeared. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they disappeared long before closing day. <laughs> <laughs> well, it became we very just discovered evident. it on cl- yes, yes. closing day, yes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Earnest money is interesting. Yeah. So. 